I'm here today with Dr. Sandy Nye. She's a naturopath, but also the regional chair of the Aromatherapy Association of South Africa. Welcome, Sandy. Thank you for having me. As you can see, I'm surrounded by soap. And there's the most incredible fragrance and all these different kinds of soaps and these soap and chakra colors and these white sheep and black sheep and most amazing gingerbread man. Sandy, you've got into business with Simon. We've had Simon on the show mm -hmm. and uh, you formed a partnership and a company, Foster and Welsh. And I'm going to start with that beautiful okay. name. Tell me, how did you come up with the name? Foster and Welsh are the two surnames of my grandmothers, my Granny Foster and my Granny Welsh. And we used this name because I wanted to honour them in, for being part of my journey, particularly in soap making. And also because they're two really strong women from who, who were my mentors and from whom I That's took my lead. That's lovely. And my Granny Foster raised me till I was 10. So I spent a lot of time with her and been soap making with her since I was 12. Tell me about that, because that was the inspiration for the gold bar, yes. which you gave our uh, uh, authors one, yeah. one year. When it was it's about 2015, I think that yes. was. Yes, yes. Well, um, it's called Green Gold. The reason we called it Green Gold was because I discovered in 2015, uh, while we were renovating our practice, an old um, handwritten piece of paper with a recipe on, which was the original recipe of the first soap I ever made. and With your granny? With my granny. And I thought, well, um, well, certainly one of them, of, of the originals. And I thought, being fifth, and suddenly I realized it's 2015, that was 50 years ago. And this just struck a chord with me. It was near Mothering Sunday, and I thought I needed to do something to commemorate that. So I came up with the idea of doing something that was gold for 50 years mm. and green because of the substances that actually go into it. So we called it the green gold and I thought, well, who can I give it to? Where would it go? Because I didn't want to sell them. I wanted to give them away mm. particularly. And I made, a, I made 50 as a limited amount so we could distribute them. And because of our connection, I thought that would be a really mm. nice place. And so they were for family and friends. And it was so well received. Special. It was beautiful. And using the, the same ingredients that we were able to use then, but in a modern format. So, you know, we could use essential oils, for example, of rosemary and peppermint, whereas we, did, we only had the plant matter there. Mm. So now we could put the plant matter in as well as the essential oil. That's the texture. And it gives you the fragrance, the texture, the properties of it. Mm -hmm. And um, using avocado oil where we only had tallow and a little bit of olive oil when we were flush mm -hmm. to use and sunflower oil as our basic vegetable oils to make. And, and this is it now or can I buy some more? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I've remade it many times but for that particular 50 bars that we made mm. those were just those were for gifts those were not mm -hmm. for selling mm -hmm. um, so we have subsequently had people want them so we've remade them again. Okay. Um, I've always been fascinated with soap making um, because it's surely something that you can learn how to do yourself. Absolutely. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a skill, it's a craft, it's an art, it's a science, it's all of those things together. And it depends on how um, complicated you wish to make it. One can get extremely complex and make beautiful works of art, or you could just make functional soap that is good mm -hmm. for your skin and that works. And what is this, for example? That particular one is a buchu and rooibos. Yeah. So we've sprinkled, we used rooibos for the colour, we extract it and use it in the colour and then we just sprinkle it on the top sometimes, other times the tops are flat. It, it and really how do you get depends. this edge? Because this is the like spoon. handmade. They're all handmade. And handmade <laughs> is so rare nowadays. Yeah, and soap making is a wonderful craft because you can be creative as well as um, choose what you want to put onto your body, which is really important. Yes. And Tell that about is just the, a spoon. About the spoon. What do you do? It depends on how thick the soap is when you pour it. And right. you get these different layers are poured different colors and they uh -huh. poured it um, different, let's call them thicknesses or traces. The, so the, that's the why term. they leave like a wave. Um, and that depends on how you sculpt it when you're pouring it. So it's quite thick? 
This you one can literally would, sculpt it. Some of it depends on how fast it's um, or how thick you've allowed it to become mm -hmm. before you finish playing with it. Um, this is a little line one can put in just for fun. That line is moringa, which mm -hmm. is moringa powder. Right. And then at the top, when I'm done, you just play with a spoon or any in implement okay. that you wish to sculpt it to make patterns. But is this like a loaf that you've cut? Yeah, that's right. a long loaf. Our loaves are generally about one and a half kilos. And then the next day, normally, you unmold them and you cut them. And then you put them out to cure for six to eight weeks before they're ready to be used. What inspires you? Nature. Always. Um, one can't help but be inspired if you walk around, you brush against everything, anything. Mm -hmm. Especially here with our fan boss. Mm. Um, just the, the buchu bar that we do, it's like a walk in the felt. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, they, they, there's no other description for it. it it's, it's so African, so indigenous. So we use a lot of indigenous oils as much as we can and use them in manners that are safe to use, not just in the soaps but in the other products that we make and also that I formulate for clients for, for whom I formulate or manufacture. I, I think you are incredible. Incredible. Thank you. Only because I have, not only because you're such a wonderful friend to have in my life, but because one day we did a, um, we went on a little journey and we tried to make a soap fragrance for a company and um, they wanted to have something that smelled like what was it? Earth, fresh earth in the morning yeah. after rain? Pe like. Petrichor. <laughs> and then you did that. You mm -hmm. identified those smells. It's like your son calls you the mad, mad scientist. And you are a little bit like that. Yeah, I'm a bit <laughs> geeky because I love the chemistry of what is in the oils, but also like, you know, the mystical properties that come with that. So there's a bit of everything, but I certainly mm. do love a challenge. So if a client does come to me and say, I want to create the smell of the ocean. Now that can be done synthetically very easily, right. but to try and create that only with the essential oils that one can get from natural extraction and from nature is, is far more challenging. Please tell me what you would do. Well, I would look at some of the base notes that they termed as. Um, those are fragrances that last for a long time and bring those into um, some of the lighter notes. And you will never get quite the oceanic smell that you would mm. with a synthetic. But it's playing with the different um, notes that the, the evaporation rates, so to speak, of the different oils. Some evaporate quickly, like the citruses. The florals tend to sort of be in your middle notes or your heart notes. They linger longer, whereas the base notes linger the longest of all. And depending on how you blend them, they can create something else. They create another entity, a synergy. Um, and that's really what we do. Sandy, you talk about base notes and what lingers longer, but where do you start? Is it like you go all the way back in your memory banks and you think, right, once I smelt a rose, that maybe could be associated with the scent of the ocean? Or how do you decide what to choose? No, not particularly. Personally, how I would choose. Oh. I, I love chemistry, so I know what, what sort of chemicals I can play with that are present in essential oils. So if I'm, for example, wanting something maybe a bit like damp earth after rain, like petrichor, I would look at vetiver because there's, there's a, a fragrance in there that is earthy and base and damp and wet, depending on how you use it. If you use too much of it, it overwhelms. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a, a lot about looking at the chemistry, looking at the, the odor profile of each essential oil and understanding through working with them for over 40 years um, how they marry and right. that's really the magic for me of you could put for example five drops of buhu into something and it will smell like something the cat does in a corner <laughs> however if you put one drop in it can completely transform a blend Mm -hmm. So it's also about knowing how much you can, how odiferous is the material that you're working with. Allow, citruses, you can put in loads and it would be a lovely dental fragrance. But um, putting too much bohu, for example, or too much rose even becomes overpowering, mm -hmm. too much jasmine. 
Um, and one doesn't wow. overpower with those because they cost a fortune to use the real thing. <laughs> yes. Synthetics are cheap as chips. You can get those. You do use the real thing. But they smell different, mm. you know, and they have a different effect on the body. And uh, a lot of people get headaches from synthetics, as mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. So for me, as soon as I get a headache, that's also a trigger if something isn't, um, if my nose fails me, right. my head will tell me. Okay. Simply by the reaction that that chemical has. It's a molecule, you inhale it. And I just have to say how incredible you are again. Because I remember <laughs> once coming to visit you. you. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, you, you really should um, own it, Sandy. You're just, you're just incredible when it comes to <clears throat> aromatherapy and, and your art and your craft and your passion. There was a delivery and somebody delivered something to you. And, ah, were you and visiting that day? I was right. visiting that day mm. and you could smell immediately that it's not that particular plant but it's a similar plant that they sold uh, you I but it's cheaper yeah. and you paid for the real thing. I remember. And you challenged mm. them. It was a long challenge. It was a six month challenge to eventually get them to admit that what they had sent me, including the certificates of analysis, were actually incorrect. Mm. Um, it was to do with time. Right. I, That's right. It, I'd ordered sweet marjoram. Mm. And I had been delivered, which was called Spanish marjoram, but it's a completely different plant. It's called Thymus mastachina, which is very different to the marjorie, mm. uh, the marjoram that I was um, had ordered and paid for. And I could smell it the second you open the bottle. Oh, no, for me, that, it was there. Mm. Um, and the company argued upside, downside, um, and eventually. Um, I threatened to have a gas chromatograph done and have it analyzed. So you didn't even do that? You could just oh, smell? No, you could, I, I know. Uh -huh. When you work with them for so long, you absolutely can smell immediately what, what is in something. I'm going to have to have you back and talk just about aromatherapy. Sure. But let me come back to the soaps. So mm. this is your chakra set. This is a chakra set that we've created primarily for some yoga studios, along with yoga mat sprays and various things, like diffusers that they use with prior to um, or during their sessions. And it was something that was requested. We waited quite a long time for the lovely moulds, and each mould has the Sanskrit symbol on it for Where that particular chakra. These came from the US. Okay, so they have their own... Each one has its own symbol. Right. Um, so this is the solar plexus chakra, and that's the symbol for, for that. So, And each one has a synergy of oils, or a blend of oils, um, that matches not only the color, so we can bring the color therapy element in, because that's one of mm. my interests and qualifications that I hold. That's another topic. In color therapy. Mm -hmm. and But it also has its unique... Um, blend of oils. So for the root chakra, that blend will always remain for that. I don't put that in, it, in any other soaps. So we have seven sets here. For example, what is in your root Well, blend? in the root chakra, on the back of the label, you'll be able to see there's blood orange, there's bitter orange, there's cedar wood, um, there's some lemon, patchouli, pimento berry, um, a little bit of pink pepper, and some vetiver, which is also in the black sheep. Yeah. And those are all um, oils that resonate with the root chakra, resonates with the color and are very grounding. So they, mm -hmm. it all fits in with the system of the chakras. How would you use this? Would you, would you first look at your color therapy and that will guide you to find out what sort of chakra you need to pay attention to? Well, the people who use these and have requested these tend to understand the system of chakras. So they may feel that their crown chakra is out of balance. So you don't have to start from the root and work mm -hmm. up. They may, might choose, that's the one I want. Or they'll pick it up and smell it and say, I need some of this. Right. And really use their own instinct. Mm -hmm. Or else people will just give them all a turn. Okay. So you can one, either one choose day. your color for the day. <laughs> so like this one's mine. And then if I, if I smell them all, I might actually be conflicted. You might, might be attracted to that, which may be that there's a bad imbalance between the two. Between the two. Wow. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Well, else you just start on a Monday and go through to a Sunday and <laughs> <laughs> come out fully zen at the end. Um, but do you innovate on the ones that you've made? Oh, yes. Um, because you, there's so many have new plants to, coming so out. And, yes. You know, you can't oh, just wow. stick to what you know. That gets dull and then it becomes rote and it becomes a job mm. and not a passion. And I think when your passion becomes your work, mm. that's when you can be creative. So 
um, I don't think I could live long enough to make all the different soaps I'd like to. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really exciting. So you do distribute all over the world? Um, our clients do. Um, yeah, but yeah. your product. My baby's in it all over <laughs> the world, which is really exciting actually to see something is on the shelves at Harrods and you think it's not my oh, label my on word. it but I created that yes. and it's a wonderful feeling. Well you should be proud, you've worked oh. so hard and so passionately about Thank this. You. And you can, you can grate some of the soaps and use them again? Yes you can, any of this, any soap can be rebatched. It, they look different. These are cold process soaps so they're very smooth right. whereas a hot process soap looks more rough and a rebatch soap. So it's you know, organic. <laughs> it was so wonderful to have you, Sandy. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for finally coming here. <laughs> you are so busy and I do value your time. So thank, thank you, you so much. This was lovely. Thanks. Thank you.